Welcome to our demo of the Universal PLM Integration, the most advanced packaged PLM PDM integration solution for Microsoft Dynamics AX, Microsoft Dynamics NAV, and Microsoft Dynamics GP. The Universal PLM Integration can be run on demand or scheduled to run automatically, can be used to integrate with multiple Dynamics databases and companies, provides robust features such as scripting, value translation, and email notifications. Custom Dynamics tables can be added to the configuration file and synchronized. Custom fields on standard Dynamics tables can be synchronized as well. It's pre-configured for many of the leading PLM and PDM solutions and can be configured to work with any PLM or PDM solution that publishes XML files. The Universal PLM integration is comprised of two parts. The Products Processing Engine, or Runtime Module as it's known, is the part of the product that validates data from your PLM solution and synchronizes your Dynamics database with that information. The Runtime Module uses a configuration file that we call a profile. The profile utility is the editor of that configuration file, and that's what we're looking at right now. You may have multiple profiles at your installation, to support integration with multiple Dynamics companies, databases, uh, or to provide support for both a test instance and a production instance. It's important to note that when you purchase a license for the Universal PLM integration, you'll also receive eight hours of implementation assistance at no cost to create your initial configuration for you. The profile utility is the tool we use to create those configurations, but we also ship the tool with the product so that you can make changes to the configuration yourself. I'm going to use SolidWorks EPDM as my PLM solution for this demo, and Dynamics AX 2009 as my ERP solution. The user interface and concepts are the same for any version of Dynamics integrated with any PLM solution. The names of the fields and a few options will vary between Dynamics AX, NAV, and GP. If I was going to start a new profile, I would click File, New, and I would select the correct template for my combination of Dynamics product uh, and PLM or PDM solution. Um, you'll see a list of all of the uh, templates um, that we currently support and there are generic templates to use if you'll be integrating with a solution that we have not yet configured. In the interest of time I'm going to use um, an existing configuration. The profile contains all the information about your implementation of the Universal PLM adapter. The profile contains all the information about your implementation of the Universal PLM integration at your company. Information such as where your PLM solution will publish the XML files that are used for integration and where we'll move those files once they are processed successfully or encounter a validation error. The name of the SQL server, the SQL server that is hosting the database we're integrating with and the name of that database. Security settings vary depending upon which dynamic solution you are using and how it's been set up at your company. The mapping tab is where we'll spend most of our time uh, in the configuration of the product for the customer. The Universal PLM integration splits the description of the ERP solutions data model into logical sections and tables. There are two sections in our standard AX templates, items and bombs. There may be times when we want to add another section to support integration with other tables, or we might just want to add a new table designation to an existing section. Whether you create a new section in order to configure a custom table typically depends on the format of the XML file as published by your PLM solution. Our templates are predefined with all the relevant Dynamics fields or attributes as they're called in our product. Because requirements vary from customer to customer, we've included many attributes that a customer might want to use, but any one customer uh, won't get close to using all of the attributes that you see here. 
You can also use the Attributes tab to add new attributes to either standard tables we've predefined or standard dynamics tables that we didn't include in our template or for a customer defined table in dynamics that you are defining in this profile. Let's take a look at the item name or description field. Each attribute value can be set using a value in the XML file, um, which is what we call a mapping, uh, a default value, or with a user script. The mapping type, XML path, and XML attribute determine whether a particular attribute is mapped to a value in the XML file published by the PLM solution, and if so, where it is found in the XML file. Entering mappings requires a little knowledge of XML files and XQuery notation. Translation tables may be created for most fields. Let's take a look at a unit of measure field. And bring up bill of material unit. I'm going to click on translations and I'm going to put in some translations between values that might be found in the PLM solution um, and what values they would uh, be equivalent to in Dynamics. So for example, uh, the unit of measure each in your PLM solution may be EA in Dynamics and ounces in your PLM solution should be OZ in Dynamics. The PLM value on the list will be substituted by the ERP value during processing. Scripting capabilities are available throughout the product and are generally used with an attribute to either filter data passing through to Dynamics or to set a value based on some type of logic. For example, I'm going to create and attach a script to the item number attribute to filter out items that begin with the letter D because they're documents and we don't want them to pass through uh, into Dynamics. I'm going to click on the user script button and I'm going to paste in a script that I've already prepared so you don't have to watch me type it in. So what we're doing is when the first character of the item number, and this is uh, this notation uh, profile table .tempRS refers to the temporary table uh, record that we're building as we process um, uh, data in the XML file. Um, when the first character of the item number is uh, a D, um, we are going to uh, skip that record by specifying interrupt equals true. We can also use user scripts to set the value uh, of an attribute based on some logic. So for example, if you wanted to set um, the model group based on the third character of the item number, something like that, that's something else you can do with uh, user scripts. At most customer sites, the PLM integration runtime engine uh, runs automatically throughout the day on, on a server. Uh, should a validation error occur, we may want to have the runtime engine send an email to the administrator and any other interested parties. And we do this by going to the logging field, logging tab rather, and by filling in the administrator's email address. Support at qbdsys.com. And we also want to put in a um, uh, return address for the email message. And what will happen is is that uh, the support, um, when there's an error, the support uh, uh, email uh, address will receive an, an email uh, notifying it that the adapter has run into a problem uh, with a file and a log file will be attached that describes in detail what the problems with the file uh, were so that the administrator can take appropriate action. And the last thing I'd like to show you in the profile utility is the notifications tab. 
we have the capability to send out email notifications of specific operations that the runtime engine completes. For example, uh, we can specify that a notification uh, is to be sent to someone whenever the inventory model group field changes. So I am going to specify the event of an item field changing and you'll also notice that there are other events such as a new make item was added or a buy item was added or one of those was updated or we created a new bill of material. And the field that I want to look for is inventory model group. And um, I am going to send it to email jerry at qbdsys.com. And you can have as many messages, uh, uh, notification messages, uh, as you like. Uh, each user can have any number, and you can have any number of users receiving um, the same messages. Now that I'm done making changes to my profile, I'm going to save those changes uh, so that we're ready for the next part of the demo, which is the runtime module. So let's take a look at the runtime module. Let's take a look at the runtime module. As I said earlier, earlier normally the runtime engine uh, runs periodically throughout the day on a server. There are times when you may want to open the runtime module with user interfaces I'm doing here. The runtime module remembers the last profile uh, that was used, but if I wanted to uh, choose another, I could click on the select profile button, but I am going to uh, select this one. This is the one we've been working with. And when the runtime module launches, I can see that there are two files that have been published by our PLM solution. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click process. And each file will be validated and AX will be updated with the information that was published. Um, and there you go, we've, we've processed the two files successfully. Uh, each file that the um, runtime module encounters is assigned a status code and is cataloged. Uh, and there are three possible status codes, awaiting, processing, completed, and failed. Um, we can go ahead and, and look at the files that have completed, including our 501 and 502 files. We can also look at that files that have failed. Uh, I don't happen to have any, but if there was a file that failed um, and I needed to reprocess that file, I could click on that file name and click change status, which would set it back up with a status of awaiting processing so that the, the runtime module will reprocess that file. That concludes our demo of the Universal PLM integration. If you'd like more information or would like a more detailed live demo, uh, get in touch with us.